take a look at some questions that have to do with sales tax. Baby Corp conducts all of its business in a province with HST of 13%. Prepare the summary journal entry to record Baby Corp's sales for the month of July, during which customers purchased 37,500 of goods on accounts before tax and a journal entry for the cash purchase of furniture with a selling price of $2,860 before tax for use in the office. And then they ask us how the journal entry would be different if the amounts were included to the tax. So let's just start with the first one. So we've got, we know we've got HST of 13%. And we're gonna have sales for the month of July, during which the customers purchased 3,000 of goods on account before tax, okay? So let's just start with that. So we've got July sales. So we're gonna have, it's on account. So we're gonna have debit accounts receivable, debit AR. And we're gonna have credit sales revenue. And we know that we're going to have to add tax to these amounts. So we know that our sales were $37,500, right? $500. Um, and so we know that the AR, though, needs to include sales tax and that we're going to need to have an account here called HST payable. And this is my amount is going to be due to the government. And it's always a short term liability. So we're going to have. How are we going to calculate the tax? It's just going to be our sales, 37,500 times 13%. And we're going to have added this to each customer's invoice as we went. And this is going to give us $4,875, which we would have added to each invoice, just like when you get a receipt in the store and it includes HST on that receipt. That does not go into the, into the vendor's revenue. That would go into their HST or GST payable account. So 4875 here. And then our AR is just going to be the balance because customers are going to owe us this entire amount. They're not going to settle the HST and tax and not settle the sale. They'll either settle the bill or they'll put it on their account. So this is going to give us AR of $42,375. The next thing that we're asked to do is to create a journal entry for the cash purchase of furniture with a selling price of $2,860. And customers have, I mean, sorry, um, companies have to pay uh, HST on purchases as well, but it's going to be an offset to this HST payable because they can get an input tax credit for the HST that they pay on their purchases and they can net it against the HST that they receive from their customers. So let's record this journal entry for the purchase of furniture. So we're going to have debit furniture or fixed assets or whatever. And we're going to have debit HST receivable. In practice, most companies would just debit the HST payable account and run it so that you would just have your net position in one GL. But you can also split it into two separate accounts, um, which may make it more clear. So here we're putting it into an HST receivable account. And then the net is going to be the cash because we're going to have to have paid for that furniture when we received it. We didn't put it onto account. And it did say that we it was a cash purchase in the question. So the furniture we know cost $2,860. That is right here. But we do have to pay tax on that as well. So down here, we're going to have $2,860 times 13%, which is going to give us $371.80. And that's going to be our, um, that's going to be our, HST receivable amount. And so the net cash that we would have had to pay for that purchase would be 3,231.80. So that's what those two journal entries look like. Now, the next part of this question asks us how the journal entries would be different if the amounts we were provided are inclusive of tax. So in this case, we were told all the amounts before tax. So what we needed to do was add the 13% tax to come up with the HST, but it is possible that things could get a little bit more complicated and we could have amounts that are inclusive. So let's see what those journal entries would look like. So the first journal entry is where we recorded the sales. And so in this situation, we had the sales here of the 37,500. But the question now is asking is what if the 37,500 included HST? 
So what that journal entry is going to look like is we're going to have the same journal entry. So we're going to go debit AR. And we're going to go credit HST payable. And we're going to go credit revenue. But in this case, we've got the 37,500 that we were given as the as the sales now is going to be our AR. So we know our 37,500 is the total amount, but now we need to figure out the split between HST payable and sales revenue. So what we're going to do here is because we have the gross amount, we're going to take that and we're going to divide it by 1.13. And that's going to give us the pre-tax amount of revenue. So that is going to give us 33,185,84. Sorry, my eights aren't looking very good there. Okay, so now we know that our pre-tax revenue was 33,185,84. And it's just going to be the difference now that we're going to use to balance our journal entry. So this number is going to be just the net. So 37,500 minus 33,185,84, which is going to give us... Four three one four sixteen. And what about the purchase of furniture? Well, same thing. We're going to go debit furniture. We're going to go debit HST receivable. And then we're going to go credit cash. So in this situation, our cash is going to be the 2860. That's gross, including tax. So then how are we going to figure out what the pre-tax amount of the furniture was? Well, let's take 2860 divided by 1.13, which is going to give us the pre-tax amount of the furniture, which is 253097. And then the HST receivable is simply going to be the difference. So 2860 minus 253097 is going to give us 329.03. I think what's notable about this question is both the math that you'd have to do to work backwards if you're given a number that includes the HST or GST amounts. Of course, if you were calculating it with the GST and it was 5%, then you would divide it by 1.05 there instead of the 1.13. But just thinking about stores when they run no tax promotions. So for instance, Superstore often, often runs promotions where they say no sales tax. So in those situations, the company doesn't have the option of just not charging no sales tax. So if they're not charged adding sales tax to each customer's receipt, then they would have to do this type of math in their accounting to work backwards to ensure that it's their sales that are lower and that they're still satisfying all their government remittances.